Hello and welcome back to this week's edition of 5 Minute Geography with me Stephen Doyle explaining as simply as possible the world around us. Welcome back to the second part of this two part series looking at the global economy and how we measure it. And don't forget to stick around to the end of the video to discover the 10 happiest and the 10 saddest countries ranked in the world. Development does not only mean wealth, but it also means the quality of life. The world can be broken into three groups according to economic development. Developed countries, quickly developing countries, and less developed countries. But how do we measure economic development? Measuring development is a difficult task as economies are dynamic and constantly changing. We use two scales to measure development. We look at a country's the gross national product, the GNP, as well as the Human Development Index, the HDI. GNP is the total value of the goods and services produced in a country and the value of goods and services produced abroad by homegrown countries. So countries with high GNP are considered wealthy and tend to have a high standard of living. There are some advantages and disadvantages for using gross national product when measuring economic development. It's a simple single figure ranking system. It shows the economic output and it also tells us the purchasing power of a country. Disadvantages are it's kind of misleading because GNP can be high but wealth is not evenly distributed. For example, Ireland's GNP is 46,000 euro per capita. However, the minimum wage pays 17 and a half thousand. The cost of living is also not taken into account with GNP. The problem with GNP is it focuses mainly on money. But when we look at development, we need to look at the quality of life. And this is why we use the Human Development Index. The Human Development Index ranks countries according to their social and economic well-being. They are rated between 0.1 and 1, depending on life expectancy, average length in education, and gross domestic product or GDP per capita. The Human Development Index also includes economic and social factors. It also takes into account inequality as it looks at how wealth, education and health are distributed across the country. And this way it gives us a broader view of the development of the country. If you rank high on the Human Development Index, countries such as European countries, Australia, Canada and Japan, they have a high GNP per capita, which means more money to spend on resources. If you rank low on the Human Development Index, there tends to be high levels of corruption. These countries fail to provide good healthcare and education, and they tend to be led by a military regime or dictators. For example, in 2015, the Human Development Index report showed that 19 of the 20 countries with the lowest score were in Africa. What's good about using the Human Development Index is that life expectancy, education and standard of living are included. We get a clearer and more detailed picture of the level of development and we can show the positive and negative impacts the government is having. The latest World Happiness Report has been released and it has ranked the top 10 happiest and saddest countries in the world. The world's 10 happiest countries in at number 10 is Australia, 9 Canada, 8 New Zealand, 7 Sweden, 6 Switzerland, 5 the Netherlands, 4 Iceland and the top 3 happiest countries in the world are Norway, Denmark and number 1 Finland. However, the opposite side of the coin is the world's saddest countries. In at number 10 is Haiti, 9 Botswana, 8 Syria, 7 Malawi, 6 Yemen, 5 Rwanda, 4 Tanzania and the top 3 saddest countries Afghanistan, the Central African Republic and in at number 1 is South Sudan. As always, I've been Stephen Doyle with 5 Minute Geography. Thanks for watching. If you like what you've seen, please click the like and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like me to cover a specific topic, please just pop it in the comment section below.